lift you up and as we glorify you. We welcome you with our praise tonight. Yes, we do.
to you our hearts are open, to you our minds are open, to you our lives are open, God. We dedicate ourselves to you tonight. Come on, right now in this moment, can you just quiet down your busy mind? You might need to close your eyes, you might need to get alone right now, all where you are, on your knees, on your face, whatever you need to do to dedicate yourself fully to this moment, God. Father God, we encourage ourselves tonight in the fact that you are victorious. We encourage ourselves tonight, God, that we can be overcomers, that we are more than conquerors tonight, God. We encourage ourselves that we serve a mighty Savior tonight, God. We lift up our eyes to you. You're where our help comes from. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, can you just lift up your eyes to him tonight? Lift up your faith to him tonight. Lift up your countenance to him tonight. Be encouraged in this place tonight. Oh, yeah.
Exiting out. Yes. Awesome. I want to give you a few quick announcements before we get into the Word tonight. If there's any guests with us tonight, we're so honored to have you on a Wednesday night for family night. They're going to put a number up on the screen, and we just want you to text welcome. If you're a texter, that's great. If you're not a texter, you can just simply fill out that connection card that was on your seat there when you came in. And um, at the back, we've got some free gifts for those that fill that out. Or if you'd like, like I said, if you'd rather text welcome, some people would prefer. We're not going to hound you down. We just want to send you some information on why we feel like God has placed us here in the Northeast region region of Jacksonville and what we feel like we're called to do and how you could play a part in that. And so we're real excited about our assignment here. Um, it's a good thing, right, to be excited about what God's called you to, to do. Amen? It's a good thing to be excited about your assignment. Amen? And you know, uh, nobody wants to just go to work and be, you want to be excited about what God's called you to do. Get excited, right? Come on, I preached to y'all on a Sunday about winning in your mind. And if you're like me, you've already been tested. Come on. How many know when the word is preached, there's always going to be a test that comes to that word. And the, the test will very, very much so probably be to discourage you or, or to make you angry or to make you bitter. But I want you to go back, listen to that, win in your mind. But we've got a few announcements for you. And, um, and that is our women's conference is coming up, and I cannot say enough about it. We are going to marry the best of both worlds. We're going to have a fun party, festive atmosphere, but we're marrying it with a just a fire-filled, Spirit of God, presence-driven service with a powerful preacher in the house on Friday night, eight powerful preachers in Saturday. It's a seven-on-seven, seven, seven women get seven minutes. I'm going to be preaching for just a, sh a short minute. There's a luncheon on a Saturday. We are going to have a letting them Letting some of the surprises out. Y'all know me. I can't keep surprises. Friday night, we'll have like a dessert reception after the, the service. And we've got gift bags for every woman that, woman that attends. It's going to be a fabulous time. It is only $30. That is it. We need you to register, though, so we can be prepared for that. Get your mamas, your sisters, your aunts, your grandmas, your friends. Get them all. Get them here. I even said bring your enemies. Get them all here. And, uh, and let's all be just have fun together, ladies, encourage one another, and just literally the Spirit of God to touch us in a powerful way. That's what I'm praying for and believing for. So that is coming up on Friday, September 20th. Um, registration will open that night at 6. You can come and enjoy the photo booths and fun. We're going to have merch tables. We're going to have vendors, all of that fun stuff out front so you can shop and look and hang out with your friends and take pictures and um, music and stuff like a party fun atmosphere happening out front. And then the doors will open for here at 640 and we'll get started at 7. It's going to be phenomenal. September 20th, that's a Friday night. September 21st, that's a Saturday. So don't miss it. I'm even representing right now, tonight, confidence. That's what we're talking about. Having confidence in God. Having confidence in who He created us to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, ladies? I can't stand it when I see young girls with their shoulders tucked in and their arms crossed. That does not say I'm confident. And I see older women just the same. Come yeah. on. And so we're going to be talking about confidence and you don't want to miss it. And, um, and then last but not least, this coming Sunday, we begin our candy challenge. So we're asking you to bring in candy. Don't forget, it'll be marked. We'll have the family ministry bin. So that's for anybody that wants to sew into that for them to be the winners. That's our nursery, our children's department, our youth department, our harvest middle, all of that stuff. If you want them to be the winner, then you want to put your candy in that one. If you want your intercessors to be the winner, you put them in that bin. If you want your music department to be the winner, you put your candy in that bin. Um, and I think there's our harvesters. If you want our, our harvesters, that's our 60 and up or 65 and up group. Um, 60 and up. You put them in that bin. I think those are the bins that we'll have. So make sure you start bringing in candy because on October 31st, we are lighting up the night. We're lighting up this neighborhood. We're lighting up this block with the love of Jesus, the light of Jesus. And we're having what we call a, oh my gosh, my mind just went blank. Trucker treat. We call it a trucker treat. It's where you pull your trunk in. 
you decorate it how you want to, and we pay, we pass out candy out of our trunks. We put a big prayer tent right in the middle, and we just pray with people that come that night. And um, so we're real excited. I believe it'll go from six to eight um, on. October 31st. And so help us start to really build up our candy reserves. And we're going to do it in a fun way. And I don't know what the winner gets, but we'll see. Um, but I'm excited about that. So are y'all ready for the word tonight? Yeah. Okay. So I want you to get your Bibles, get your notepads, get your pencils, get your winning mindset on and get ready for the word tonight. All right, Pastor Dave. Music team, don't forget you are rehearsing tonight. Yeah. And they, they left me hanging. They, they normally grab my table for me. So I get to, oh. I get to do it all. Me hanging, get sick for one week, and they leave me hanging. What's up, y'all? Are y'all good? Yes. Uh, a couple of things. Um, Pastor Jennifer has just did a very diligent job of talking about Femfire. Don't go anywhere yet. Um, how many of you realize that the home crowd has a responsibility that the away team doesn't have? Right, right, right. She can get him getting drunk. How many realize that the home team has a responsibility that the away team does not have? Right. And that is to pack out the stadium. That's good. All right. So I want to encourage every lady, every female, go on tonight and register. I understand that there is a registration cost. And when people see $30, they see that as just a, an unbelievable amount of money. How dare they charge for the word of God and all of those types of things enter into your mind. And that is not at all the case. We want to take care of the dessert bar that's going to happen on Friday night. We want to take care of the gift that you're going to receive. We want to be able to take care of your lunch. And if enough ladies participate, it's also your offering. So we are giving to you. Dessert, gifts, lunch, and your offering. Come on, somebody. It's all for you. All right? I have been to conferences before where they charge a fee and then they receive an offering. We are trying to work this to where the fee handles every part of it. How many realize that it is not free to fly from Australia to the United States of America? All right? Julie Bailey is coming in from Australia. Now, she's not just coming in to minister to us. She's coming in to do a, a, a lot of different ministry in the States. And so we're, we're able to jump onto that. But how many of you know that it would be very, very nice to be able to bless Julie to where that ticket is not her responsibility? Not only that, but to be able to eat while she's here. And if she wants to buy some souvenirs, she can do that too. You hear what I'm saying? So I really want to encourage all of our ladies... Do you love this lady? Yeah. Thank all five of you. <laughs> Do you love this lady? Yeah. I love this lady. I really want you to register. I really want you to apply positive peer pressure on your friends and get them to register, get them to sign up. Because I'm telling you, we've had these events the last two years. This particular event is going to blow out all the stops and go higher and farther than any of the others have ever done. And you need to get in on the ground floor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. Thank you, Jada and Gabriel. I appreciate my kids getting behind me. Lord, y'all are a tough crowd tonight. I love you, baby. I'm proud of you. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to just be real with you for a second and just let you, you peek in for a second into what it's like to be a pastor and to be a leader and to be a minister. We're not supposed to take things personally, but when we put a lot of work into a lot of things and we really pray really hard and we do a lot of different things and nobody shows, it feels like nobody loves us. That's true, Pastor. Not only that, it then makes us feel like nobody loves God. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so I really want to encourage you, not because you love us, not because you love Harvest, but because you love Jesus and because you want to impact the lives of women all over this region of Northeast Florida. I really want to encourage you to be here. And I really want you to help us 
by going on the Fimfire page, by going on Facebook and all the different means in which it's out there and sharing it and sharing it and sharing it and sharing it. Take pictures, do a video of yourself talking about coming to the Fimfire conference and how excited you are. Do a video with a friend that you're going to be inviting. Do different things like that and tag the Fimfire page so that we can get a lot of traffic going so that people can understand, wow, there's something to this. Amen. It's a vision that God gave Pastor Jennifer and, I, and Pastor Danny, and, and they worked together when they first launched Fimfire several years ago. It's a vision that God gave, and, and it came out of this house that is now ministering to our entire conference. Our conference consists of 101 churches all over Florida and southeast Georgia, excuse me, the southern Georgia, southern part of Georgia. And, and so we have an opportunity to reach all of those churches right from right here. It's very important, Sarah. Are you going to move on? Yeah, when you get it. <laughs> when you understand how important that it is. That this is, we're not bored and just need something else to do. Believe me, that's not the reality. Are you hearing me tonight? Yeah. All right. For those of you that have been praying for me, thank you so very much. I still need your prayer. Uh, my, my, my lungs are still not doing what they need to do. And I've still got a pot full of cough drops and a bottle of water. I'm ready to go. Um, but it's, 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 it's not wanting to relent. And so continue to help me pray for complete healing in my body. Um, bronchitis slash pneumonia tried to, tried to do ugly stuff to me last week and is still trying to hang around. So, but thank you so much for praying. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being in your place. I hope you're never saying he's talking to you now. Thank you for being here. We started a series on Wednesday. You know what? Before I get into that, I've got a couple more things. Um, I don't know if you paid attention or not. We can't really access this side of the building because they are totally renovating our nursery. Um, and I cannot wait for you to see the finished product. Um, it is going to be uh, double what it was. The ceiling height is going to go to a, a, almost 10 feet high. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be just a much larger, nicer, more vibrant room for our kids. I'm very excited about the work that's going into, into all of that. And the guys are even working. I think they're still working right now. We're trying to get it done uh, so that our kids can know how much we care about them. It, it does make a difference. Uh, and so really pray for our guys as they are as they're working. Pastor Ben and Pastor Kyler and Sean Knight. Um, I, I was up there this week as, and Leslie came and helped us out as well. Uh, we got a lot more work to get done, but those guys are, are really moving uh, full steam ahead. And I'm so thankful for them and appreciative for all that they're doing. Okay, let me get into this. Um, several months ago, I started a series called Foundations. And I did not get finished with it. And I will come back and I will revisit it. Uh, but I really feel an impression in my spirit to kind of interrupt it for a hot minute and to go in a different direction. Um, I feel like the Lord really began to uh, impress upon me this reality. And honestly, I'll be real with you. When I started to share about peace during our Don't Worry, Be Happy series back in July, I really sensed an urgency associated with this word. And so I'm going to be unpacking this. I don't know how long it's going to take me. Y'all know how I am. I have no idea how long it's going to take me, but we're going to be exploring Galatians 5, 22 and 23 exhaustively for some time now. So I want you to grab your Bible and, and, and turn to Galatians 5, 22 through 23. You might not know it by its address, but when we start reading it, you'll know exactly where we are. Galatians, the fifth chapter, Oh, here we go. I turned to Ephesians. Galatians, the fifth chapter, the 22nd through the 23rd verse. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. I'm going to say this again. Now the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. I'm going to be ministering to you for a little bit now on the fruit of the Spirit and how important its participation, its, its role 
Holy Spirit's role in our lives, how important that it truly is. How many of you have heard individuals when you've invited them to church or when, when they've been around a church-based conversation, how many of you have ever heard those people say, yeah, I've been to church before and I know how all those church people are? I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. Raise your hand real quick so that I can make sure that I know my audience. But yeah, 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 yeah. You know those individuals. Those are individuals that have come into church and have heard things like that but have not experienced things like that. Yeah. Right. And that then becomes the testimony of the church. Right. And I realize that we try not to allow that to be our testimony. I'm going to do my best to try to stay in this general vicinity because that's where the fan is. I do want to apologize to you. We had one of our ACs go down uh, just before service and we, we didn't have enough time to get it remedied or whatever. And so that's the reason why it's unusually warm in here. And that's also the reason why I might not be doing a lot of walking tonight. I'm probably going to stay right here. My dad would always say, this is the spout where the glory comes out. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to stay right here, probably close to this fan so that I don't perspire any more than I already am. Um, but we all know those individuals that they don't want to come to church because we have not exemplified the fruits of the spirit. Okay. Uh, now I realize that this is what I started to say a second ago. I realized that we as a church body do our best to exemplify these things. We still are part of the global church. Right. And the global church has failed miserably at projecting this. And I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why that is. But before I do, I want to drop this thought and this concept to you. Say spiritual awareness. Spiritual awareness. Say that again. Say spiritual Spiritual. Awareness. Awareness. How many of you have ever been with someone before and, and you, you guys were walking or driving or what have you and that individual said, man, I love that song. And you realize in the middle of that moment that you didn't even realize a song was playing. Your mind was somewhere else and there was music that had been played long before the person ever drew attention to it. But the moment that they drew attention to it, now you are aware of something that was going on all the time without your knowledge. Right. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Pastor Jennifer and I were, were, were uh, in a place the other day and she, and we were walking together. We were trying to do our power walk thing. Uh, and and, and, and it, man, she said, man, that smells good. And I had, I had no idea what she was talking about. The moment she said, man, that smells good, what did I start doing? Trying to smell what she smelled. Why? Because she had an awareness of something that I did not. She drew attention to something that I was not paying attention to. It is my responsibility, it is my job in this word to declare to you something so that you can become aware potentially of something that you were not aware of. Not like it's brand new just happening, but something that's been rolling through time since the day of Pentecost. Uh. Then maybe, just maybe, it's not something I'm aware of, therefore I'm not paying attention to it and giving it place like I should. All right, I, I just analyzed the crowd. My teens are still in here. Y'all hang out with Pastor tonight. Pastor uh, Kyler is working with the guys on the on the nursery remodel. He was like, is it all right if the kids stay in? And I'm like, well, I'll do my best to hold their attention. <laughs> I think I can. Y'all remember the train? I think I can. I think I can. Yeah. All right, so teens, uh, you know what? I tell you what. Yes, let's do this. Y'all are going to hate me for this. All of my, all my student ministry, y'all come line in the front right here. No, say where you are, Gabriel. You're in the right place. Everybody else is in the wrong place. So, so Jay, Jay, y'all come up here. Y'all say, Harmony, come on, come on. Everybody come, 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 come. All my teenagers, all my middle schoolers, sit right here on the front row. And then if y'all fill up the front row, y'all can go to the wings. But let's fill up the fill up the front. And while they're moving, obviously you see the new chair configuration. Well, I don't know how I feel about all of this. Yeah, don't sit there because that's that'll block my fan. That's the fan chair. The Holy Spirit is seated right there. Um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Perfect. Yeah, you can. You know what, big man? Go ahead and sit on the second row right there beside Miss Monica. This is a nice lady right here in this red shirt. Uh, Chris, will, he'll leave you alone. I promise. I'll, I'll slap him if he does. Um, we are trying to find 
the best camera angles that we can with, the, with the, as little uh, interruption as we can. So that's why we did this. Now, just in case you think that we got rid of a bunch of chairs, we added six more than we had before. That's good. Okay? That's so good. we got more chairs out than we had before, and now we got something better. Brother Leslie's right here so that I can spit on him and he perceived everything. He was missing all my spit before, and he's going to get it. He's going to get it now, Jesus' thing. And all my people watching on the camera, I'm not going to spit on you, I promise. Uh, there's a big screen in between you and me anyway, so it's, it's all good. Um, but, but uh, so y'all, are y'all are y'all here with me? Are y'all good? Are y'all tricking with me? What am I talking about? Talking about the fruit of the spirit. Gabriel, Gabriel's listening because he was in the right place before everybody else was. All right. So, so everybody say fruit. fruit. All right. So we got to have this heightened awareness. Say heightened awareness. Heightened we got to have this heightened awareness of the spiritual aspects or the spiritual fruits that accompany the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, first of all, who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He's part of the Godhead. There's God the Father, God the Son, and what? God the Holy Spirit. And God the Holy Spirit is the one that lives on the inside of us. When we invite him to. How many of you realize that you have to invite him to? It has to be intentional. I have a phone. How many of y'all have a phone? Or excuse me, you got a phone? It's just about everybody's raising their hands in the building. Everybody's got a phone. Wow. What, 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 what happened when you got this phone? Did, did all of a sudden it just start working? No. Did all of a sudden somebody start calling you? No. no. What did you have to do with this phone? You had to activate this phone. Okay? There are some of us, and we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, but we have not activated the Holy Spirit. We have not purposefully let Him know, I want your input in my day. I want your input in my life. As a matter of fact, I don't just want your input. I want you to control my day. I want you to control my mind. I submit myself to you so that you live in me and I don't live in me anymore. Thank y'all for it, y'all. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? We have got to be intentional. Say intentional. intentional. With taking advantage and utilizing the fruit of the Spirit. Now, what I want to do, because I read this to you out of the NIV version, I now want to read this to you out of the Passion Translation. And we don't have the Passion Translation yet. We need to purchase it. Uh, but we don't have it yet in all of our media. So let me read it to you. Or, or do we, Tyron? Have y'all bought that yet? You got it. You have been. Pastor Ben fell in love with it. So put the, put the Passion Translation for Galatians 5, 22 through 23 up there. I didn't think y'all had it yet. So that's the reason I didn't give you that. Thank you, Tyron. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Passion translation. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. Pause. I want you to understand that everything that we're talking about is not something that requires mental discipline on your part. This is not something that requires you to become more of a disciplined individual so that now you are at, using joy. You are trying to be more lovable. You are trying to be kinder. You are trying to be more gentle. This has nothing to do with you. What does the text say? But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is what love? Divine. 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 It's not natural. It's not phileo. It's not eros. Those are the Greek words for the word love. That love is the agape love that is only available through God. Yeah. God is the only one who can manifest that kind of love. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was preaching uh, a series. I'll never forget it. I was a kid. He was preaching a series. It was a new church that he had just taken. And he was the pastor of this church. And he was preaching on 1 Corinthians 13. It was his nature to talk about the love of God because it was a, a, a component of who my dad is. My dad is a very loving man, and so as he takes on new pulpits and new ministries, he lets them know that love is what we always show. And so he always starts with 1 Corinthians 13. And so he's doing this series on Wednesday night, and he reads through 1 Corinthians 13, and this man with a loud voice, as dad says, to love our enemies and to, and, excuse me, and to, excuse me, love keeps no record of wrongs, was what dad said, because that's part of 1 Corinthians 13. And that man said, that's impossible. And my dad stopped and he said, you're right in the natural, but through God, all things are possible. And he automatically realized that this individual and so many people in the body of Christ will look at the fruit of the spirit as something that they've got to try and get out. Like it's something you can do. 
It's hard to smile at somebody that slaps you. At least it is for me. Right? It's, it's a difficult assignment to show love to someone who is somehow mistreating me. That's a difficult assignment in the natural. But in God, all things are possible. See, what it requires, we've been accustomed to say lower living. Lower living. Lower living. I'm going to get y'all talking one way or another. Lower living. Everybody say lower living. I will not move on until you say lower living. Lower living. What is this one thing going to be? Higher living. We are accustomed to lower living. What is lower living? Flesh. What is lower living? That which is that which I can touch, that which touches me. All of those things that I'm associated with, that I've learned from adolescence, that I've learned from being a child, is lower living. We understand lower living. But what God is calling us to is a place of higher living, and the fruit of the Spirit is the higher living. But I want you to be aware of something. It is something He does through you. Wow, that's good, Pastor. It is not something that you've got to try to muscle through yourself. That is the problem. Man, okay, here we go with an analogy. How many Star Wars people do we have in the building? You like Star Wars? Okay, not many people. How many of you at least know what Star Wars is? Okay, okay, I grabbed everybody without part. Right, most everybody knows what Star Wars is. I will pray for those of you that don't like Star Wars, that you will hear God, because God speaks to me through Star Wars. <laughs> In the first Star Wars movie, which was not the first one, it was the first one that they made, that we are introduced to a character, his name is Luke. Luke Skywalker is a relative, he's actually he's the son, we find out of Darth Vader. We find out that the Force uh, moves on the inside of him, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, they call him Ben, but Obi-Wan Kenobi is, is it brought into his life so he can teach him how to use the Force. Well, that sounds like the devil to me. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it didn't originate in the things of God, but I do believe that there can be a spiritual metaphor that can be used for the kingdom in this movie. Right. And that we all have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, and we need someone to help mentor us to listen to the Holy Spirit, because we know what it's like to listen to ourselves for a long time. Now we need someone to come into our life to teach us and show us and mentor us in how to hear the Holy Spirit speak to us. So that the force can be with us. Y'all are getting better. You're warming up. I know it's hot. So, this is what takes place. Luke, later on in the movie, is in the Millennium Falcon. They're flying through space. And Obi-Wan Kenobi is trying to teach him how to use the force. And he's got his lightsaber. And he's trying to fight this little thing that keeps zapping him and zapping him and zapping him. And Obi-Wan Kenobi says, here, let me help you. And he puts a helmet on his head that closes his eyes. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all remember the scene? Can you see it played out in your mind right now? Because I'm seeing it as I'm talking about it. He, he puts a helmet that covers his eyes. And he says, how is that going to help me? He said, you've been accustomed to using your eyes all of your life. You need to learn how to use the force. I feel like preaching now. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to learn how to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. That will push you. All you know, though, is how to react. Your eyes, those natural things, teach you how to react. God never called you to react. He called you to act. Reaction is when someone else does something to me or something else does something to me and I respond. Action says no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what you throw at me, I'm going to persistently live for God. Say fruit. Fruit, fruit is a byproduct. Alright? My daughter is the fruit of my wife and I, our love. She is our fruit. She is a byproduct of our love. Right, right. Are, you, are, you, are you picking up what I'm saying now? Yes. The Webster's Dictionary defines fruit as the effect or consequence of an action or operation. Product or result. Right. So my question is, what is your fruit? Right. What is your fruit? 
That's not something that you really probably want to talk about right here in front of everybody. But the question that you need to ask yourself on an ongoing basis is what is the byproduct of my life? Why? Because when we begin to self-analyze, self-discern, when we start looking at ourselves, we can start assessing whether or not we are seeing more fruit of Dave or fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I will, I'll be honest with you, when I start seeing more Dave fruit and less Holy Spirit fruit, you know what I will always find? My devotional life has waned. Okay, let me say this again because I just lost all my teens. My time with God, the time in which I spend with God, has gotten less. It's gotten diminished. When I start seeing and hearing more of Dave, I realize, oh, God, forgive me. I've neglected my time with you. I am no longer aware of what is happening in the spirit realm. I am now more aware of what's happening around me. Are you? Thank you, Gabriel. I appreciate that. He said, just preach it. I'm trying. You got to give it in my best effort. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you hear what I'm saying? What we've got to learn how to do is engage the Holy Spirit on a regular basis. Okay? Let me, let me, I'm going to, let, let me just flirt with you. I, my clock says I got five minutes. I really don't, but I'm going to, I'm going to take it. The fruit of the Spirit Excuse me. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. So you have to understand that everything comes up under the heading of love. Do you read that? I love this translation because it gives us the Greek and, 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 and it contextualizes the Greek and it allows us to experience it in its proper usage. Love in all of its varied expressions. Now listen. Joy that overflows. Yes. 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 Well, you know, the Lord gave me joy. And I'm doing my best to invest in it to try to make it something bigger. But right now it's just tiny. So I only have joy like for five minutes on a Sunday morning when they play my song. I'm getting better because I had joy at work when I got a raise. Do you see what we're doing? We are trying to fit a fruit of the spirit into an emotional dynamic. And, and the fruit of the spirit is not emotional. It's not about emotions. As a matter of fact, if we're going to be truthful, it is the governor of our emotions. It is the filtration system of our emotions. Uh, look, look, my wife is into healthy living. I think she talked about that a little bit on Sunday morning. Y'all, y'all, how many of y'all enjoyed the message that she delivered on Sunday? I've heard nothing but positive reports. I'm, I'm, my wife's a good preacher. I'm glad that she chose to marry me. Um, I don't know what I'd do if she was not with my wife. Um, but but she, she, she's a healthy person. She loves health. She reads health books. She's, she buys organic food as best she can and, and pushes us to do that. And Jada kicks a lot more than I do, but I still kick too because I've got some things that I really, really like called chips. C-H-I-P-S. Chips. Frito-Lay. Chips. Jalapeno Fritos. Yes, oh Lord. Doritos. If it's got an O in it, I like it. Cheetos. Nachos. Tostitos. Oh, it's got an O in it. I, I, I like it. I, it's, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, you know, I, I feel it. You know, I love chips. It's just it's so. But I also realize that the way that they create those things is not the best for my body. Right. So I'm working on it. Veggie straws are okay. They're not. There's no O in it, though. You know what I mean? It's veggie straws. It's, they got to put an O in it somehow. And then I like it, right? But listen, I don't want to get way late. So she's, she's really into help. So she calls. She doesn't call me. She, and she talks to me one day. This has been about, about, about three or four years ago. She said, I've been researching our water. I said, oh, Jesus. 
what about our water, baby? Are we, do we have to buy a microscope? Do we? She said, no, I've been researching our water, and our water doesn't have everything we need to have in it. And so I found this thing that I want to buy. How much does it cost? That really doesn't matter. What matters is what it's going to do for our family. So that lets me know it's not cheap. Okay? All I want to know is how much is this going to cost me? So we buy, how many of you heard of the Berkey filtration systems? We have a Berkey, okay? So, so it, our particular Berkey holds three gallons of water. Now, I'll be honest with you. When she started talking about this Berkey stuff, she showed me the website, she showed me the videos, and I couldn't believe what they were doing. This dude goes out and he gets a gallon of water from the ditch in front of his house. He pours water that is brown and black and has stuff floating in it. He pours it down into the Berkey. Excuse me. <coughs> he pours it down into the Berkey. It goes through all the filtration system of the Berkey. And it comes out clear. Not only does it come out clear, he puts it through all of the different tests to determine whether or not it's palatable, whether or not it's potable water, and it passes all of the tests with flying colors. He drinks it. I saw what that water looked like before him. He goes to his pool, and he gets pool water, and he pours it down into the Berkey, and he goes to all these different places where he gets all of these different water supplies, and all of the water, once it goes through the filtration system, comes out clear. Not only does it come out looking clear, it passes all the tests, minus everything that hurts you. And I thought, that's pretty cool. Let's buy one. So we got one. Why am I going through all of this to talk about this? Because that's exactly what the fruit of the Spirit is to your emotions. you got all of this nasty garbage that you've been floating around with, and all that it's got to do is be processed through the filtration system of the fruit of the Spirit so that it can go through all of those different things. So then now what starts coming out of you is clear. We know what contamination looks like, and you're good at spewing contamination, but the people around you will realize how good your God is when what they knew was contamination now is clear, now is pure, now hydrates them. Now it takes their life to another level. And now they walk up to you and say, what's different about you? You're not foul like you used to be. What happened? And you say, it's called the Holy Spirit. And there might be some folks in your office that don't believe that the Holy Spirit works like that anymore. Say, well, well just look at my life. Foul, clear. Foul, clear. Now, we can't brag about it because without the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives and without the heightened spiritual awareness, we're, we're going to fail. We're going to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. And so we've got to keep spiritually aware. Last, I started to say last point. Really, this would be my first point. We'll want it. My, 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 my first real good point, I've already talked about it. I want you to, to apply it now to your life. You need a mentor. You need somebody that's been living for God longer than you right, yes. right. to teach you, yes. to show you need an Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I want to encourage you. We want you to be our Obi Wan Kenobi. I can't be everybody's Obi Wan Kenobi. It's physically impossible. I can't. Jesus wasn't able to do it for all of humanity. He did it for twelve. And then he grabbed three out of the twelve and did it more with them. Right. Okay? But you need to find someone who can impart into you what it's like to engage the spirit when so-and-so grinds your last gear. When so-and-so says what so-and-so always says and you start to manifest the response of you. You need that person in your life saying, no. Right. You then need the Biff anointing. I'm shifting movies now. How many of y'all remember Back to the Future? My daughter loves that movie. How many of y'all remember Back to the Future? Hello, McFly! You, you need someone with the Biff anointing. That's the character in the movie. You need someone with the Biff anointing to knock on your head and say, Hello! We want to see the Holy Spirit, not you! Ah, that's good, Pastor. 
good. good. You hear what I'm saying? So if we will allow the Holy Spirit to be the gauge and the mediator and the monitor of our lives, we can then begin to see these fruits materialize. Yeah. Yes. What I want to do, and I can't do it now because we're out of time, i got to stop. But what I want to do is I want to go through each and every one of them, and I want to exhaust all that they are, all that they mean, and all they produce. Right. Because how many of you realize fruit, pure fruit, has something inside of it called seed? When you start utilizing the fruits of the Spirit, there then becomes spiritual seed that then you begin throwing into the lives of other individuals. And once you throw enough spiritual seed inside of somebody that's got fertile soil somewhere, it's in there somewhere, they just need enough seed dumped on. But when you start allowing the divine nature of the fruit of the Spirit to throw enough seed on them, they will start to see yes. things they've never seen before. Yes. And they'll start to get saved. They'll start to start out. They'll begin to ask you questions. The, the, when the fruit of the Spirit starts coming out of you, the problem is, I don't, I don't have time, but the problem is, we don't like seeds. Right. When I go to the grocery store, I find the seedless watermelons because they're easier to eat. I eat, I go after the seedless grapes because they're easier to eat. Come on, somebody, let's let's acknowledge our 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 laziness. We've carried that into the body of Christ. Oh my God! All we want to do is eat the fruit of each other, and we have worked at it so long that it, we've made it seedless, so that it's palatable. Now it's no longer divine. Ah, now we're just swapping fruit, enjoying one another's personality and calling it anointing. Are you hear what I'm saying? But the fruit of the Spirit is divine in nature. It's got seed in it. And when it gets into the ground of somebody else, it will produce. The problem is we like to be seedless. I don't have time. Okay, I got to stop. I hope that I've baited you enough to get you thinking, to get you praying, to get you saying, mm, yeah, I don't want to have seedless fruit. I want to have fruit that's got divine nature associated with it, that has seeds in it that causes other individuals to, to receive from God like I have received from God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right, all right. I want you to grab your, your tithe and your offering. I like this configuration because it forces you all to sit more in the middle. I like that. And y'all are not rowdy at all tonight at all. There's just no rowdy people in the building. Y'all need to grab rowdy. Ushers. I'm ready for y'all if y'all are ready. I know we got our, our seat planners up here on either side. Are y'all ready to give? Yes. Father, I just declare a blessing over every gift and every giver. I thank you, Lord, for moving supernaturally in the lives of believers. God, and I thank you for turning it around. We sang that song tonight. I declare that we're going to see that turnaround and that manifestation of the fruit of your spirit, not the fruit of us anymore that's seedless, but the fruit of your spirit that produces things in us as well as the lives of others. Bless as only you can. In Jesus' mighty name, you can be released to give your time and offering.
to sit your hands toward the throne. Father, I thank you for blessing. I declare abundance and supernatural increase to come and be one with them. In Jesus' name, thank you for increase. Thank you for overflow. Thank you so much, lady. Gentlemen, I appreciate it. I do not believe that there is anything about me that is contagious. But because I want to guard you and I want to guard me, I'm not going to go to the back door tonight. All right. I said, I'm, I'm coughing a lot and I don't want to, I don't want to injure anybody. I don't think I'm going to, but I want to be cautious. But please know that I'm hugging all of you. I love you. And I thank God for you. Uh, and I declare that we're all here. The most stand up all over the building. Let me bless you. Hallelujah. I bless you from the top of your head. To the soles of your feet, I would that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I claim abundance and supernatural increase to come and be one with you all the days of your life. And all of you are getting, get understanding. Don't just discover, but fulfill your destiny. Hug about 10 people before you leave this building tonight and know that Jesus loves you, and so do we. Peace out, homeless. I love you.